Hello again, everybody. Welcome back for some more Super Mega Baseball 4 Season 3 action. As today, we have game number 36 between the Freedom and the Neon. Neon are currently 24 and 11, first place in their division. Freedom are 18 and 17. They're in second place in their division. One game out of their division lead, but two games out in the wild card. So this could be a possible preview of, the, of a playoff matchup as they could see each other again. That, as this is the last time I think they're going to play in the regular season. But currently, Neon have the advantage in the all-time series in between these two teams. Currently 4-1 record, have outscored them 32-16, to but the Freedom finally picked up the first win against the Neon the last time these two teams met. So, let's see, Neon are trying to bounce back and get back on the winning side against the Freedom. But to do that, they got to beat Dylan Rowe, who's on the mound with a 1-3 record with an 8.87 ERA, while Dip Kirby's pitching for the Neon, 4-2 with a 1.81 ERA. She's been a really good surprise so far for the Neon. But let's get to the lineups. <clears throat> Any changes need to be made. Marino's going to come back in. Everybody else looks to be good. Nobody's injured. Yep, these are all the regular starters. So I think we're good to go. Uh, we're going to go select the uniform. They're at home. Let's go back to their normal home uniform. And let's go ahead and hop to the game. <clears throat> So on the freedom side, we got a little bit of fatigue for the catcher Doherty, a little bit of negative morale for Reed, high morale for Foundwood, and that's about it for them. As far as the Neon goes, a little bit high for Nguyen, but Bird's also really high. So let's see if those two can actually pick it up in this game and carry the team to another victory. Yep, this crowd's a little bit packed here. Night game, home field advantage for the Neon. The Neon right now taking the field. <clears throat> Hester Weaver is going to be batting first for the Freedom, followed by Leonidas Hood, and Chesley Norton is going to be batting third. And first up is Hester Weaver, first baseman, batting 244, two homers, eight ribbies. And the first pitch from Kirby, she looks in. There's the pitch. That's first pitch is grounded towards second, gets off Avenue's glove. It's going to bounce into right field. Immediately, the Freedom of the first man on base from a misplayed ball from Avenue, as that's been her Achilles' heel. She's great offensively, but defensively, not so much. And next up would be Leonidas Hood, their center fielder, batting 185 with three homers, nine ribbies. But now we're running at first base. Nobody out. First pitch is low. Popped up, right side, foul territory, out of play. Here's the 1 1 pitch. Swung on and missed. Swung on and missed again. Fastball inside. Got him swinging. That's out number one. Here's Chesley Norton, the second baseman. Bang. 268. 18 RBIs for six homers. He is a power threat. So you need to watch out here. And the first pitch is launched deep and high in center. No doubter. This one may leave the stadium. Nope. Hits off the very back. Walkway. It's now 2 0 for Freedom. We just said he's a power threat, 477 feet. His seventh of the year, RBI 19 and 20. <clears throat> so here in the top of the first, the Neon are down by two. And here's Jeff Foundwood, their first baseman, batting 319 with seven homers, 29 RBIs. He's an even bigger power threat. And the first pitch is fouled off to the right hand side. So we'll see if Kirby can bounce back and get back into sort of this. This one's grounded right out towards her. She'll pick it up, throw it to first in time for out number two. As the catcher, Nash Doherty, is up at the bleak. Bang 387, six homers, 17 RBIs. First pitch misses low. Hit foul to the right hand side, one and one. Inside corner, taken for strike two. Swung on and missed. Fastball in the outside corner. Strike three. That ends the inning. But the freedom strike first. Two run home run in the first. They now lead 2 nothing. Neon coming up for the first time. Warren Barajas going to be leading off. It's Chris Sloan followed by Bird following up. So first up is Ward Barajas, the first baseman, bang 324. He's got 10 home runs, 23 RBIs. Let's see if they can answer right back and get back in this game. Yeah, there's the first pitch inside, ball one. Grounder toward first. 
First baseman has it. Over onto the bag. That's out number one. It's Brahas Browns out. And here's Chris Sloan, the center fielder, and team captain. Batting 351. 13 homers and 32 RBIs. And he pops first pitch up on the infield. Third baseman waves everybody off. And this should be caught. That's out number two. Sloan's a little impatient. And that brings up Kalani Bird, the right fielder, bang 395, 16 home runs, 37 RBIs. And once again, she's carrying the offense again this year. She's out in front of this one, fouled it away. Out in front again. Lined right back to the pitcher, and that's caught for out number three, and that'll end the inning. Neon go down one, two, three. So we're to the top of the second. Neon still trailed by two. So first up is Lyric Roden, batting 233, six homers, 19 RBIs. And first pitch line straight to Bird in right field. She'll glove this one, out number one. That was a line shot. Here's Raylan Reed, third baseman, batting, what is he? 262, yeah, five homers, 16, 18 RBIs. First pitch hit out to Sloan. He's got plenty of time and room. He'll glove this one for out number two. So two pitches, two outs, and here's Betwixt McCall, the left fielder, only batting .67, so he's due to get a hit here against the Neon. No homers or RBIs to speak of. So he takes a strike on the inside corner. Fastball hit on the ground to Avenue. She'll grab this one, throw it to first. That's out number three, and that'll end the inning. So freedom come up empty. <clears throat> so we went to the bottom of the second inning. Neon coming up. They're still down by two runs. Two nothing your score. First up is Avenue to win, batting 387, 16 home runs, 42 RBIs. She plays second base. This is probably her best season she's had so far since joining the team. She takes a ball up high. Out in front, fouled it off to the right-hand side. Popped up left side, foul territory. This is going to remain in play, and third baseman is going to glove this one for out number one. Now to bring up the left fielder, Kaylee Shipwreck, batting 349, 11 home runs, 23 RBIs. She's also having a nice rebound season so far. And first pitch is inside, ball one. And she just was in high and deep to left. This has got a chance to go. And this one's out of here, home run for Kaylee. Neon claw back into this one, now down by one. 384 feet out to left field. Her 12th homer of the year, RBI 24. And now the Neon are down by one. It brings up Luca Instigate, third baseman, bang 346. Seven homers and 18 ribbies. As the Neon trying to find their way back into this down by one. And first pitch fouled up behind the plate. Will this reach the seats? It will not. This one's caught for out number two. Now to bring up the catcher, Kid Moreno, batting 387 with 12 homers and 24 RBIs. He's cooled off considerably since having that big home run stretch earlier in about the midseason. He takes a fastball in the inside corner for a strike. Line shot out towards second. Norton has it over to first. That's out number three. And the Neon are retired, but they get back into it. They strike with a home run of their own. They now trail by one, two to one, going top of third. So here's the pitcher, Dylan Rowe, batting 400 with a homer and an RBI. So he does have a little bit of pop in that bat. Pitch by Kirby's, fastball, down low, strike. Breaking ball, also on the inside corner. Take it for a strike. This one's grounded out towards short. House Tooth has it, throws on over. Plenty of time, beats him by about two steps. That's out number one. And the Freedom are back to the top of their order. Here's Hesto Weaver, one for one with a single. And he came around to score in that first inning off that home run. And he hits the first pitch through the hole in the left-hand side, out towards left. Shipwreck will get it back in, and that'll be a one-out single for the Freedom. As Hood steps back in now, he's 0 for 1. Runner at first, one out. First pitch fouled away off the back screen. Breaking ball, check swing, taking for a ball. 
fastball out of range of instigate. This is going to roll into I mean, left field. And Shipwright gets it into third. And now have runners at first and second with one out. And here's Chesney Norton, who had that big blast in the first. One for one with the homer, driven in both of their runs so far. He's got a chance to do more damage here. Sticks a breaking ball in the inside corner for a strike. Fastball taken outside. Fouled away, so it's one and two. Hit through the middle into center field. Sloan's going to get to it. Fire at home. This is not going to be in time. Run will score. Toss over to first. Runner gets back in time. It's now three to one. As Norton comes through again with another RBI. And the Freedom extend their lead again to two runs. It's now three to one. <clears throat> Has found with sips in the box now. Still got runners at first and second with one out. So that one misses low and outside. Another one misses low and outside. So it's 2-0. and oh. Fastball hit into left. Shipwreck can corral this one. She'll glove it and get the ball back in. Runners have to hold. So it's now two outs. Runners at first and second for Nash Doherty, who's 0 for 1. Kirby needs one more out to get out of this little jam. There's a fastball on the outside corner. Taken for a strike. Slider on the inside corner. Strike two. High fastball. Swing and a miss. Ball gets away. Marino is able to recover, get the ball the first. That'll record the out. And that'll end the inning. Freedom score another one. Norton comes through again. He's driven in all three, but they now lead three to one as we move to the bottom of the third inning. So here's Bear House Tooth for his first at bat, batting 287 with 10 homers, 30 RBIs, playing shortstop. It's still early. Neon have plenty of time to get back into this one, but he swings at the first pitch, pops it up right in front of the catcher. And he'll range out, wave off the pitcher, and he'll glove it for out number one. Now to bring up Dip Kirby, the pitcher, bang 250. She does have one home run, driven in three. So she might not look it, but she's got a little bit of pop in that bat as well. Takes a ball inside. Takes high, ball two. Pops this one up into the center. Second baseman is going to range out and get this one. Waves off everybody, and it's left for out number two as Kirby is retired. So back to the top of the neon order. There's Barajas. He's 0 for 1. Two in. I mean, two outs. Nobody on. <clears throat> that misses low. Ball one. Should have let that one go, but fouled away. Hit high and deep to center, but I don't think it's got enough on it. That's the warning track. And comes back in a few feet. And Hood will glove it for out number three. And the Neon are retired. So we move to the top of the fourth. Still three to one. Freedom leading this one. And here's Rodin. I think it's husband. Yeah, Rodin. 0 for 1. And the pitch from Kirby. It's a fastball down low and in. Strike one. Breaking ball fouled away the right hand side. Out of play. So 0 and 2. Swung and missed the fastball up high. Strike three, so one away. I'll bring up Reed now. 0 for, 2, 0 for 1, hoping to be 0 for 2. First pitch misses low and outside. Ball one. Fastball in there for a strike. Fastball fouled off the right hand side. So one and two. Breaking ball misses outside. Two and two. Slow grinder up towards first. Barajas has it. Steps on the bag. Out number two. So two down. Nobody on for Patuix McCall, who's 0 for 1. wonder who hit the normal fielder is he's playing for. So he takes a fastball high and outside for a strike. Breaking ball misses inside. Curveball hit on the ground towards second. Avenue gets to it. Tosses over to first. That's out number three. And that'll end the inning. So move to the bottom of the fourth. Freedom come up empty, but they still lead by two. It's three to one. Neon still only have one hit so far in this game. We're about halfway done. So here's Sloan. He's 0 for 1. Looking to get a hit. Takes a fastball inside. Ball one. Late swing on that one. Fouled it away. 
So it's one and one. Hit this one high into left field. The fielder waves everybody off, and he'll glove this one for out number one. I'm going to bring a bird now, 0 for 1. She's got the power to get him back into it by 1. That misses inside as well, 2 and 0. Oh. Hit into the center. This is going to hang up just long enough for the center fielder to get to it, and that's out number 2. And that'll bring up Avenue, who's 0 for 1. Neon aren't having too many good swings right now. And first pitch. Lined into the left center. This is going to go all the way to the wall. Avenue's going to have an easy double out of this one. She makes it in there standing. Throw goes into third. So runner at second base. Two men out. And here's Keely Shipwreck, who's one for one. She cracked the home run out in, what, second inning. She's counting for the only Neon run so far. But she's got a chance to tie it up here with another swing as that one's down the middle. Low and in. One and one count. Way outside. Ball two. Swung on a bad pitch. Fouled it away. Two and two. Skies this one out toward left. This is not going to do it. Left fielder comes in. Waves off the shortstop and third baseman. And McCall will glove it for out number three. And the Neon are retired. Leave a man on base. But they still trail by two. He's moved to the top of the fifth inning. Now batting, the Here's the pitcher, Rowe, 0 for 1. Pitching a lot better than what everybody expected. Only giving up two hits so far. The first pitch from Kirby's inside, strike one. Breaking ball just missed. One and one. Fastball in the outside corner. Avenue lays out, pulls it in. Gets up, throws to first in time, out number one. Nice play over there at second. So back to the top of the order. Here's Weavers, two for two with two singles. I think he scored two runs as well. Fastball in the outside corner, strike one. Another one in there on the inside corner, strike two. Fastball lined up the middle, and he's got his third hit of the game, all singles. So one out, runner at first, and here's Hood, who's one for two with a single. Could use a double play right now. I think Norton's up next. He's been the big playmaker for him so far today. This is fouled off, so it's one and one. Misses down low, ball two. Fastball fouled off. So two and two. Pop foul out of play again. Another one fouled off. Fouled away once more. So we'll keep doing it. Hit up the middle. This is going to drop for another hit. And that's going to bring Norton up once again with the runners on base. Two for two, single and homer driven in all three of their runs. He's got a chance for three more if we don't watch it. First pitch hit in the left, but right at Shipwreck. Norton's retired for the first time today. That's now two outs. Still got runners in first and second. Here's Foundwood, 0 for 2. Kirby could use one more out here and get out of this jam. First pitch grounded towards short. House Tooth has it. Throws the first. That's in time for out number three. And Kirby does get out of the jam. Freedom leave two men. Well, leave, yeah, they leave two men on bases. On the base. Do not score. Moves to the bottom of the fifth. But they still lead by two. And here's Instigate 0 for 1. Whole team's been pretty much quiet so far. We're in the middle innings now. First pitch misses outside. Ball one. Line shot into right center. This will roll all the way out to the wall. Instigate's on his way to second. He might have a chance for a triple. He's rounding second. He's trying for it. Throw into third. And it will not be in time. Instigate's in there with a triple. And that brings up the tying run at the plate for Moreno, who's 0 for 1. We know he's got the power to knock this out of here. And that could tie the game up. He's going to loop in the center. This is going to be caught for the out. 
as the gate has to hold. That wasn't deep enough. So one out. Still have a runner at third. Here's Houndstooth 0 for 1. Just looking for a base hit or a ball hit deep enough. Outside for a strike. That looked pretty low. Fouled away left hand side. It's 0 and 2. Outside. Ball 1. Popped up. I don't think this is going to be deep enough either. And it's caught by the center fielder. Hood gets it back in. Instigate thought about it, but held up. Now there's two outs. It's up to Kirby. 0 for 1. And she helped her own cause here by getting a hit. I mean, Shane put, let a leadoff triple go to waste, and that's exactly what's going to happen. This one popped out into right field. Right fielder has it. Out number three. That ends the inning. So, indeed, they start off the inning with a leadoff triple and cannot get the runner across. So we move to the top of the six. Still 3-1. to one. Freedom leading this one. Storty steps back in for at bat number three. He's 0 for 2. Kirby's at 60 pitches. This might be her last inning, depending on what happens. First pitch is hit into right center. This will drop for a single. <clears throat> Bird gets it back into second. And leadoff runner is on base for the freedom. Here's Rodin, 0 for 2. Not a stealing thread over there at first. Fastball's in there. Strike one. Slow grinder out toward third base. Foul territory. Out of play. Fouled away again. So still 0-2. Fastball swung on and missed. Strike three. Chased one out of the zone. So one away. And there's Reed. 0 for 2. Still have a runner at first. First pitch taken in down low, strike one. Fouls one away. 0 oh 2. Hit in the left. This is going to drop for a single. Now, her runners at first and second. They're placing their hits just perfectly. There's McCall, 0 oh for 2. Good double play opportunity here if Kirby can just get a grounder. But this is going to hit into right center all the way up to the wall in the gap. That's going to drive in at least one. It's going to drive in two runs. That's a double for McCall. It's now 5-1 to one for the Freedom. As I said, when he came up for the first time at bat, he's going to be due. As he's only batting less than 100. So Kirby is down, down by four runs. Still only has one out. Runner at second base. They're thinking of bunting. They do bunt. Throw goes to third. In time to get the runner there. Nice play by Kirby. Get the lead runner. So two down. Runner at first. Here's Weaver. Three for three. Takes the strike down low and inside. Skies went out the center. This should be caught. No! Sloan can't get to it. That drops. So Weaver's now four for four. Tough Sloan for sure would have had that one. Here's Hood, oh, two for three. Runners a second and third, two outs. Kirby should have been out of this inning, you would think. Can ill afford to give up any more. This one's grounded towards Avenue. She'll have it throw to third, out, throw to first for the third out. That ends the inning. The freedom leave two more runners on base, but they score two more times. They now lead by four as we move to the bottom of the sixth inning. Y'all need to get something going. They only have three hits. Freedom have 11. Here's Barajas. 0 for 2. And first pitch. Taken inside. Ball 1. Another one inside. Fastball. Ball 2. Line shot towards short. Laid out and gets it. Weaver throws the first in time. Out number 1. Barajas is robbed of a play there. That'll bring up Sloan. 0 for 2. That Philly miscue didn't cost him anything, but I still feel he should have caught that one. He takes outside for a ball. Little looper out towards center. This is going to drop for a hit. Sloan picks up his first hit of the game. Now have a runner at first with one out. And that'll bring up Bird. 0 for 2. There's still time for the Neon to get back into this one. It only takes a few swings. Burke can get two runs back here. 
So you'll take a strike down the middle. Pop foul behind this plate. Line shot into right. This will drop for a single. And that'll put runners at first and second. With Avenue coming up. We know she's got the pop to tie this. Well, not tie it up, but get back in it within one. She's one for two. She doubled her last time up. Swung at the first pitch. This is grounded toward third. Out at third. Toss over to first. Avenue is doubled up. That is not how they wanted that one to go. Neon yeah, come up empty. Leave one runner on. <clears throat> Had two men on with one out, and it cannot get anybody in. Top of the seventh coming up. Still five to one. Freedom lead. And here's Norton, two for three. He was finally retired his last time up, but he's done a lot of damage already with the homer. Driven in three. Kirby is still in it, but this is going to be her last inning for sure. And the first pitch. Norton's done it again. This one's out of here. Two home runs for Norton. Freedom extend their leads now 6 to 1, 411 feet. That's his eighth homer of the year. Yeah, that brings up Foundwood, 0 for 3. Kirby's day's done. I was hoping she could make it through the rest of the inning, but that's not going to happen. Andre Brooks is going to come in now. He comes in with a 1.50 ERA. That's one of the worst outings from Kirby in a while. But the first pitch from Brooks is grounded out towards short. House through fires the first. That's out number one there. Brings up Doherty, one for three with a single. First pitch fouled away. Fastball fouled off also. So 0 and 2. Misses low, ball one. Fouled away. Smoked in the center. This is going to go all the way to the wall. Bounces off the base of the wall. Sloan gets it into second, but it's not going to be in time. It's close play. Almost got him. That was closer than I thought it was going to be. But that's a double. Brings up Rodin, who's 0 for 3. Runner in scoring position with one out. First pitch misses low. Check swing. That's in there. Strike one on the outside corner. Grounder towards third. Off the instigates glove. Over towards Houndstooth gets the first, not in time. That's going to be an infield single. This game was unable to corral that one. So now you got runners on the corners for Reed, who's one for three. And Freedom are threatening to score even more. First pitch hit up the middle. Avenue can't get to it. That's going to drive in one. That's another single. They've gone single crazy all throughout this game. But most of their hits have been singles. There's McCall. He finally came through. Still batting below 100, though, but he drove in two runs last time up. First pitch misses inside. Fastball's in there for a strike. Check swing. Fastball's in there again. Strike two. Fouls it off. High fastball really went up there to get that one fouled it away. Misses inside. Two and two. Fouled off once more. Another one fouled away to the left hand side. Swung on, got him. Finally got him with a fastball up high. That's out number two. It brings up the pitcher Rose, 0 for 3. They're probably going to leave him in the game. Take that back. They're going to take him out. Wilder Burke's going to come in and pinch it. Batting 197 with three homers, five RBIs, a lot of power. First pitch is in there. Strike. Slow grinder towards the pitcher. Brooks picks it up. Slings it over to first. That's out number three. That'll end the inning. As Reeve Santiago is going to come in to pitch now. Comes in with a 4.66 ERA. Man, is he a good pitcher. At least statistic-wise. Hey, Attribute-wise, not statistics. Anyway, Freedom scored two more. Another home run from Norton. Didn't help at all. So now leads seven to one. Move to the bottom of the seventh inning. And her shipwreck one for two. She's got one of the very few hits that Dion have today. Well, her hit was a home run. First pitch is a strike on the inside corner. And another one on the inside corner. Strike two. Line shot towards short. Weaver has it over to first. 
And Shipwreck is retired. That brings up Luke Guinness to gate. One for two. He tripled his last time up. This the lead off the inning. But he was stranded over there. First pitch is a strike in the outside corner. Popped up. Left center. This has got a chance to drop and will not. Center fielder lays out with a slide. He's able to grab that one. Out number two. That had a chance. But here's Marino. 0 for 2. Two outs. Nobody on. He smokes the first one pitch out toward the gap in the right. This is going to go to the wall. Marino's on his way to second. He'll be safe there with a the double. This Hood gets this one in. So Marino trying to mount a comeback with two outs. Runner in scoring position at second base for Houndstooth, who's 0 for 2. And he's going to pop one into right center. This should end the inning. Center fielder's going to wave off the right fielder. And Hood corrals this one for out number three. And that ends the inning. As the Neon coming 50 once more. They run on second base. They trail by six as moves to the top of the eighth. Now batting, Here's Sesto Weaver. Four for four. Weaver. Double and three singles. He lucked out last time up. That ball he hit should have been caught as he fouls his first one away. Fouled the way again. And that one fouled off. Hit on the ground is short. Avenue has this one. And Weaver is retired for the first time. Out number one. That'll bring up Hood, the center fielder, two for four with two singles. And he fouls the first pitch off. Check swings. That one misses outside. Another breaking ball inside. Strike two. Fastball hit into right. Bird is at the wall. Bounces off the wall. She can't get to it. Bounces away from her. She'll get it in a second. That's going to be a double. She brings up Norton once again with somebody on base. He's three for four. Two home runs. They're going to auto walk him. Yeah, they're going to auto walk this guy. Not auto walk. They're going to intentionally walk him. He's done too much damage. They can't afford to give up to any more. Just going to intentionally walk the guy. So they intentionally walk Norton to get to Foundwood. He's 0 for 4. Let's see if this plays out. Even though he's got a lot of power, they got to be careful here. One out, runner at first and second. And first pitch misses outside. Swings, fouls it away. Misses inside. Ball two. Fastball's in there. Strike two. Two and two. High fastball swung on a miss. Strike three. So the walk paid off so far. Two down. And bring up Doherty now. He's two for four with a single and a double. So they're not out of it yet. See if Brooks can get him. First pitch is on the inside corner. Strike one. In there again. Strike two. High right, fastball. This is going to drop for a hit in front of Bird. Gets it in. It's going to be a play at the plate. And he is thrown out. Nice play by Burrs. Marino gets it and tags out the runner. Trying to get into home plate for the score. That ends the inning. Freedom come up empty, but they still lead by six. Out hitting the neon 17 to six. Majority of them are singles. Comes up Brooks. He's going to get taken out for a pinch hitter. Pruitt's going to come in. And he enters bang 383. And he pops up the first pitch. Right to second base, and that's caught by Norton. For number one, here's Barajas, 0 for 3. A lot of impatience from the Neon today. Fastball misses low. Line shot into the left. This will drop for a hit. As Barajas gets his first hit. So runner at first with one out. Brings up Sloan. He's one for three. He singled his last time up. First pitch laid on. Fastball blazed right past him. Hit high in the center. This is going to be caught. Hood has it. <clears throat> Gets it back in. 
Hans retreats back to first. It's now two down. That bring up Keilani, who's one for three with a single. Neon don't have much to be proud of so far this game. That was line drive in the center. I mean, right center. Bird is going to get thrown out. Lots of mistakes being made by the Neon today. As Birds. It's a line drive in the right field. Gets away from the right field a little bit, but she gets thrown out and trying to advance to second base. And that'll end the inning. <clears throat> so Neon had a chance to possibly score a run, but they come up empty. Top of the ninth coming up 7-1. to one, Your score. Rodin is up at the plate, batting 1-4. for four, right, A single. And Dunk Lawson's in pitching now. And his first pitch is in there with a strike. He's got a .70 ERA. So he's pretty much been unhittable so far as this was fouled away. Fouled away again. A little light line drive towards first. Barajas will glove this one out of the air for out number one. Now that'll bring up Reed, who's two for four with two singles and a ribby. First pitch fouled off. Slider on the high outside corner. Taken for strike two. Swung on and miss. Breaking ball got him. Strike three. And that brings up McCall now. One for four with a double and two RBIs. Batting with two outs. Nobody on. First pitch way late on. Fouled away to the right hand side. Well, left hand side. But he's going to pick up himself another hit. This one's lined in the right field. So McCall comes in batting less than 100. And he's already got two hits and driven in two runs. Sounds about right. Here's Santiago, the pitcher. Batting 375. Swings at the first pitch. Misses it. Fouls off the next. Fouls another one away. So still 0 2. Swung on the miss. Couldn't get the fastball. Strike three. That ends the inning. As we move to the bottom of the ninth now. Neon have three outs to score through six runs. They want to keep this game going. And first up is going to be Avenue. She's one for three with a double. And pitch from Santiago is fouled away behind the plate off the screen. Fastball misses low. <clears throat> Slider's in there. Fouled away left hand side, so still one and two. Grounded up the middle. Shortstop's able to get to it. And just does get Avenue at first base. That's out number one. Here's Shipwreck. One for three. She's got the home run. But that's all she's got so far today. She's accounted for all the offense so far for the Neons. That one's in there for a strike. Fastball outside. Ball one. Fouled it away. So one and two. Foul away, left hand side, out of play. Misses low, ball two. Popped up, center field. Shortstop's going to range out, and they're going to glove this one for out number two. And they are down to their last chance. Here's Instigate, one for three with a triple. And first pitch inside, strike one. Way outside for a ball. Way inside, ball two. Popped up left side. This should do it. Third baseman ranges out, and she'll glove this one for out number three. That ends the game. Neon lose this one pretty easily. Mostly in part to one player in particular. But they're going to lose this one seven to one. Never, never really end this one except for the second inning on. After that, this is pretty much over with. <clears throat> Only get, pick up eight hits to give up 18. Best player from the Freedom Day is going to be Norton, obviously. Three for four, scored twice, hit two homers, drove in four, intentionally walked. So he's been on base four times. Yes, he was the main offense. He was pretty much the only offense they needed today. For the Neon, it's going to have to be Shipwreck. One for four, scored once, hit the home run. That accounted for their only run scored. As the Neon just did not show up today. Rowe picks up the win, went six innings, gave only five hits. The one run, which was a homer. Picked up his second win. He's now two and three.
ERA drops to 7.36. Santiago picks up the save, going three innings, gave up three hits. Kirby picks up the loss for the Neon, went six innings, gave up 12 hits, six runs. Very uncharacteristic of her so far this season. Struck out five, gave up two homers. Her ERA is now about two and a half. So she's going to have to try to put this one out of her mind and get ready for the next start. Chesney Norton's your number one star for the Freedom. Three for four with two homers, four RBIs and two runs scored. Hester Weaver's your number two star, also from the Freedom, as is the third star. But Weaver's four for five with a double and two runs scored. And McCall, as I say, coming into this game, batting less than 100. He's your number three star. Two for five with a double, two RBIs. And that's it for this game as the Neon come up empty. But they should still be in first place in their division. <clears throat> we'll look at that in a shortly after we get these AI games out of the way. Of which we have 22 games to play. Man, let's get to them. First one up is going to be the Bottlenoses and the Fantastics. Bottlenoses are going to win easily, 7-2 there. Macho is taking on the Lucky Breaks. Machos are running away with it. The Lucky Breaks tied up late. This is for the Machos to come back and win it, 5-4. Bolters and Philosophers. Bolters are making easy work of that one, 6-2. Bottlenoses again. Taking on the defending champ outlaws, and the outlaws are going to win this one 4 2. Serpents and the champs, a little bit of a close one to the champs, pounded on later on and win for 6 1. Super Sneaks against the elephants, the elephants win 4 1. Water Bullets and the Riddles, a bit of a close one. Riddles pull it out 3 1. Ancients taking on the advocates, and the ancients are going to win this one. Extra innings 5 4. Bandits taking on the war wagons, and the bandits are going to walk away with double them up 8 to 4. Bars taking on the ancients. Ancients are going to win this one by the looks of it. 6 to 4 there. Gray is taking on the champs. Looks like the champs might win this one. They looks like they will. They also double them up 6 to 3. Tundras and the favorites. Favorites come from behind, take the lead, and they hang on 7 to 3. Champs and craniums. Craniums score first and barely hang on. Squeaker there 2 to 1. Tundras taking on the guardians. And back and forth action here. Tundra's going to hold on, double them up, 10 to 5. Advocates and the Bandits, 11 innings, but the Advocates pull it out, 3 to 2. Fantastic's taking on the Underworld. Underworld shut them out, 3 0. Super Sneaks, Energetics, another shutout, 1 0 for the Super Sneaks. Spider Bears taking on the Bolters, 3 straight shutouts, 2 0. Bolters win that one. Bolters and Spot. Spots usually can't win at home, but another shutout, 2 0. Philosophers and the Freedom, and Freedom get blasted in this one, 11 to 1. Bottlenose is taking on the champ Outlaws. Outlaws win that one 5-2. Barge and Outlaws up next. And Outlaws win again 6-5. And that'll do it for your scores. So looking at the standings, Bush League Conference, Jubilee Division, Outlaws lead it. 21-17 record. Got a two-game leader with the Bullets and the Bottlenoses. Champs as well are two-game out. Energetics down by 3.5. Navy Payment Division, Guardians with a 20-17 record, have a half-game lead over the spots in second place. Cranium are a game and a half out, favorites two back, and the Bolters are six and a half. Dynamic Division, Tundra's lead with a 25-11 record. Razzles in second place with 21-14, three and a half out. Machos are seven games behind, Philosopher seven and a half, the Riddles twelve and a half out. Bleacher Bone Conference, Sass Factory Division, Serpents lead with a 22-13 record. Bandits in second place, two games behind. Bards down by five. Gobblers five and a half. Grays down by six. Advocates down by ten. With a negative 79 run differential. It's not the worst in the league, but that's pretty bad. Ambitious Division. Super Snakes lead, 20 and 17 record. One game lead over the Freedom. Lucky Breaks, game and a half out. Warbag is down by five. Fantastics down by six. Persnickety Division. Neon still lead, even though they just dropped that one. Got 24 and 12 record. Lead the Spider Bears by four and a half, so they still got a pretty comfortable lead. Underworld down by five and a half. Ancients down by six. Elephants down by eight and a half. And looking at the news, let's scroll down. Not much news to be talked about here. Macho's made a change. Luca Alday was picked up. Dude Fitzgerald was kicked off. So they swapped out a C plus for a C. Eh. Pretty bad starting pitcher. One they'd picked up isn't that much better, but and we got some training for Rince Pruitt. He's 38 years old, so that's not going to happen. Don't have the training budget anyway. And we got training for Owen Lozano as well. That one is one we'd like to jump on, but that's 800 grand, which we only have 42,000 available, so it's not going to happen either. All right, so we're getting close to the end of the season. Let's take a look at the wild cards. Right now, the Tundras, Outlaws, and Guardians are in. Razzles currently have the wild card in the Bush League. But 21-14, got a two-and-a-half game lead over the spots. 
with a bunch of other teams three and a half out. So there's still a race going on over there. Bleacher Bump Conference, currently Neon Serpent and Super Sneaks are all in it. Bandits have the wild card right now, 21-16. Got a one-game lead over the Spider Bears, but there's a bunch of other teams all within two to three games. So it's going to be some nice wild card races to watch as we're getting here in the last week or so of the regular season. Speaking of which, we don't, yeah, we got, actually we got 11 games left. All right. So next one up is going to be Neon on the road taking on the Sewer Snakes. As we just said, there's Sewer Snakes we're going to be in. So Neon are 24-12. They're going to have to send Love Drummond, their ace, to the mound. She's only 5-3. and three, so It's not the best year she's had so far. 3-13 year race, which is still pretty respectable. Taking on Xerox Eel Soup for the Sewer Snakes, who's 3-1 with a 2.91 year race. So should be a good, nice pitching matchup. <clears throat> but we'll see if the Neon Bats can actually show up on this one. But that'll do it for this one. We'll see you back here for game 37 as we're getting near the end of the season. But we've got a little bit ways to go still. Anything can happen. But right now, Neon pretty much have a comfortable lead in first place. But that can evaporate pretty quickly. We'll see you in here for the next game. See ya.